Good morning. I'm coming from the famous lake that's in Nanjing, which I cannot pronounce after six years of being here. I think it's Shuan, starts with an X, something like that. So it's a cloudy day, and there's some sort of running event happening here today. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to set up different shots around this park and talk about a random topic. So the topic I want to talk about on this uh, vlog is um, the idea of innovation. How do we create innovation in um, what are the key ingredients to make uh, innovation happen? And there was a tweet I saw from Betcha Boy talking about this topic. And what I said in that was the lack of resources actually help to spur uh, innovation. And what I'm going to do is um, go into what I think in detail that means. So here I'm in front of this, uh, right in this area right here is an uh, area that a lot of dancing antis go. But I think it's a great place to shoot my next shot. So lack of resources for innovation. I think that's a challenge, especially in uh, resource-rich schools, schools that have a lot of budget to buy whatever they want. Um, the problem with this scenario is that we give our students uh, tremendously some really, really good equipment and they don't understand why, they don't have the why behind why they, they would have that equipment. So I'll take a video, for instance, and this video I'm taking right now is done on an iPhone with a, with a tripod that's magnetically stuck to a piece of metal and then I've got it, it mic'd up with a Rode mic. It's, it's probably budget level set up as much as you can. But in most schools, you don't see this type of setup. You'll see a setup where they're using a professional level camera. And if you ask the students, um, why they can't use an iPhone versus a the professional level camera, I think they'd have a hard time understanding the reason why. And the reason why that is the case is because the school automatically gives them the best equipment. I think the other way it needs to be done is you give them the worst equipment to the student. They learn that they can actually produce something and they'll see the weaknesses. And we want the student to sort of investigate how they can make their, their content better and have that path of finding the equipment that fits them and they'll have a real understanding of why. Instead of having a very fancy zoom lens, just move the camera closer, have a zoom. So let's see. You can see a bit of the dancing that this is very commonplace here. So get back to that. Um, the way schools are doing is they're giving the best equipment, like I said before, and assuming the students will understand why that equipment is better than what like an iPhone is. And in video, the most important thing is the microphone. That's the most important thing. And those professional level cameras have those settings, but most students won't understand that. And when they use it, they're, they're not even taking advantage of it for that aspect of it. And that's why just a, a normal camera would be probably best for them. So the, the question I've had at job interviews is, schools being very proud of the fact that they have, are resource rich. And they say, if you want to innovate, you actually want to reduce those resources so that the students sort of struggle through that learning process and work within the means of what they have so that they create something that is different than anything else. Uh, this is a very difficult shot to get. I'm just trying to give you a, a view of some of the of the lake. And there's a really beautiful um, lake, uh, wall, or not wall, bridge. 
that goes along and it just strings the forest. Um, but it's such a foggy day that the contrasts are so bad right now. So if I come close, you can see, but I'm not important in this part. Um, so the, if we come back to the, how do you plan for a school where if you have a lot of resources, and I think also if, if I go to, if I go to department head and say, well, actually the students, uh, they, they will innovate much better if we don't give them the best resources available. It sounds so counterintuitive to um, uh, improving learning. Because if you want to improve learning, we want to give the best resources possible to the students. And by taking away those resources, we're saying that they're improving learning. It, it doesn't make sense. What I'm saying is rethinking how the budget is. You still probably have the same allocation of money that you would previously, but instead of having the teacher or the department head going through that learning process of figuring out what is needed, you let the students go through that process. So um, that's a bespoke method of budgeting and it's difficult because you can't just buy in bulk, it's buying on an individual basis. I would argue that it's actually budgeting through a individual education plan. So, and the student works out and tries to figure out through a learning process, through design thinking, whatever it is, uh, what tool best fits their needs. I'm in, um, next to a noisy bus, that's where I am. But I'm next to a, the city wall, and right there is one of the old gates that go into the park that I was just walking through. Um, and what I wanted to follow up on was, so I was talking about innovation, limitation and in innovation in the context of uh, video. How would I do it in the context of, let's say, a makerspace? If I was going to start a makerspace from scratch, it'd be a room and maybe one tool. <clears throat> and this tool is the ShopBot. And it cuts, it can take plywood and it will cut out shapes for you. And the reason why I say that is from that tool, you can make so many other things. There's, there's, a, it's a, there's so many open source uh, fabric, or not fabric, uh, furniture that you can make. And the reason why I say that is if you have a tool like that and you have an empty maker space, what you want is the students to go in there and the staff and see all the things that need to be fixed. Because immediately they're going to go in and they're going to feel that, okay, we don't have anything. What do we really need? And as they work in that space, they'll have a better understanding of, well, we really need maybe workbenches. Maybe it's not that but let let that discovery happen through the students and then use a use design thinking process they're already building out the empathy because they're in there they're the ones experiencing what is lacking in that space and then let them design solutions and use uh, let's start with the shop bot and use that uh, even me suggesting to use the shop bot is probably not the best way to go. We want the students to actually discover why a shop bot is really important. I understand why it's important, but we would want them to figure that out. So ideally the shop bot shouldn't even be there. Go into empty space, see how they can create uh, the tools necessary for innovation um, by researching on the internet. What is available? What can they make? Um, and that comes back to, there's, you know, nothing, you know, lack of resources will inspire ideas to, to innovate. And once you get that mindset going where the student has the power and the control to change something because they see a problem and then they actually make a solution, then you get that sort of repertoire going and you can develop that idea through other projects. I'm on the other side of that wall, 
um, right over here is the, this is a, a newer gate. And you can see how big it is. And you can see this reinforced concrete up there. And if we look on the side, that's the original wall. And they just cut it out and then they put a, a gate in there. So that's the difference between the old and the new. Um, I'm going to stop at this point. Uh, I think I've given an idea of what can be done when we have limitations. Um, I think it's one idea to theorize it and the other idea to put it in action. And all I've been doing is thinking about it. I haven't had a chance to sort of put it into action. I've only done it on a personal level because um, I have uh, financial restraints on what I can get. So I work with what I have and that's an iPhone and a Rhodes mic and a magnetic tripod.